We're going to go right to the book of Joshua, chapter number five. Joshua, chapter number five. And I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified Version. Joshua, chapter five, verse one through three, verse six, verse nine, and verse 10 through 12. Um, and we're going to pick up where we left off at last week. We're going to be in that same vein. Um, our our uh, series is evolving into the new things of God, evolving into the new things of God. And so we're going to pick up where we left off at uh, last week in that same vein, but in a different chapter. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. If you have Joshua chapter 5, say, I have it right now. If you don't say, wait on me. Amen. And the Bible says, amen, in Joshua chapter 5, uh, verse number 1 through 3, it says, Now it happened when all the kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to the west and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over their hearts melted in despair and there was no fighting spirit in them any longer because of the Israelites and what God had done for them. Verse number two, at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make for yourselves flint knives and circumcise the new generation. Somebody say the new generation circumcised the new generation of the sons of Israel and was done before. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the sons of Israel at Gibbath Halath. Verse number six, for the Israelites walked 40 years. Somebody say 40 years. They walked 40 years in the wilderness until all the nation, that is the men of war who came out of Egypt, died because they did not listen to the voice of the Lord. To them, the Lord had sworn an oath that he would not let them see the land which he had promised to give their fathers to give us a land of abundance flowing with milk and honey. Verse number nine. Then the Lord said to Joshua, this day, I have rolled away the reproach, derision, ridicule of Egypt from you. I have rolled away the reproach, the derision, the ridicule of Egypt from you. So the name of that place was called Gilgal, rolling to this day. Verse number 10, while the Israelites camped at Gilgal, they observed the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month on the desert plains of Jericho. Verse number 11, on the day after the Passover, on the day after Passover, on that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. They ate some of the produce, somebody said, mm, God is giving you a taste of what's to come. He's going to give you a taste of what's to come. Yes. They ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. And verse number 12, our key verse, and the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten some of the produce of the land so that the Israelites no longer had manna but they ate some of the produce of the land of Canaan during that year. During that year. I'm going to read it in another translation. Glory to God. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Uh, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. 
shall ye not know it. We're taking our thought um, from the 12th verse. And it says, and the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten some of the produce of the land. For a few moments, I want to talk about, glory to God, a new day and a new way. Mm -hmm. Turn to your neighbor, say it's a new day and a new way. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. A new day and a new way. In Ecclesiastes, the book of the preacher, chapter number three, verse number one says, to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I told you last week in the book of Genesis during the creation process, God in his magnificent wisdom divided time into different seasons. He divided the time into different seasons and each season has its own specific purpose and intent and that God has foreordained certain things certain things that happen in certain seasons and because God is the creator he's the creator of the seasons of life both naturally and spiritually, he has divinely designed every season of our lives in accordance to his own plan and his own purpose. In the prophetic book of Daniel, chapter number 2, verse 21, Daniel said it like this. He said, and he, speaking of God, he changeth the times and the season. He changeth. The word changeth has an E-T-H on the end, which denotes that God continually brings change. He brings change. Amen. God doesn't change, but he causes change to happen in our lives. He said, I'm the Lord. I change not. But I cause change to happen in your life so that you can experience all that I have ordained for your life. You can't stay in the same season. You can't keep going through hell every now and then. God got to change the season to bring you out of the stuff you're going through. Somebody say, thank God for change. And so, and so he has designed it in a way that we cannot remain in the same seasons, naturally and spiritually. And new seasons establishes new changes. I'm going to say that again. New seasons establishes new changes. There is a fixed time on the calendar of God that he has set and ordained for every season to change. Somebody say it's a new day and God is going to do it a new way. Here in the text, and I already know I'm not going to finish this today. Here in the text, the children of Israel are at the beginning of a new era. They are at the beginning of a new era. For 40 years, the children of Israel had been waiting to receive the promise of God, the promises of God. I'm preaching and teaching to some people today, amen, that you have been waiting for some promises of God. You even told some people, they say, you out of your mind. I, I just don't believe that's going to happen. And you learn you can't tell your promise to everybody. You can't tell your dream to everybody because you have dream killers tell your neighbor disconnect yourself from the dream killers and even the dream stealers come on here glory to God clap your hands and give God praise they have been waiting for the promise of God, amen, which in this particular case was a place called the land of Canaan, the land of Canaan, the land of Canaan, and they called it the land of milk and honey, the land of milk and honey, talking about the richness of God, the, amen, that this land is going to be a fertile place. It's going to be a land, glory to God, where God is going to cause, amen, the blessings to come up on their lives that they have been waiting for. And so it's the land of Canaan, the land of milk and honey. It was the land that God had promised 
to give Abraham and to give his descendants. First of all, I want to say this. Amen. I'm so glad that God is not a man. Because I've had some people make me some promises. And they couldn't keep them. And in turn, I've made some promises. And I couldn't keep up. But one thing for sure about God, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you can trust that God is going to keep his word. But the Bible says he's not a man that he should lie. So I know we say God can do anything and God can do everything, but God cannot lie. Is that right? I'm glad he can't lie. God cannot lie. In fact, he said a liar is not even going to tarry in my sight. That's one of the things God hates. And so God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he would repent. Hath he said it? What did God tell you? What did God say? Hath he said it? Hath he said it? Shall he not do it? Shall he not make it good? And so God, amen, has made this promise to the children of Israel. And they have been going around the same mountain. They had been going around the same mountain for 40 years. And finally, God got their attention and said, hold up, go ye northward. I'm getting ready to bring you into a new season. You've been going around this same stuff. Some of you have been going around the same stuff, the same stuff. You need to stop and listen to the voice of God so he can give you instructions. Come on, somebody, because sometimes we lean to our own understanding. And the Bible clearly states that we are not to lean to our own understanding. But in all of our ways, my God, I feel my help. Amen. In all of our ways, acknowledge him. Have you acknowledged him? Acknowledge him. Talk to him. Consult him. Ask him. Talk to him. And he will direct your path. You say you're getting ready to leave your job. What did God say? You're getting ready to say you're getting ready to make a move. What did God say? And so God had made this promise. And for 40 years they had been waiting for this promise to come to pass that God had given Abraham and his descendants. God had made this promise to Abraham over 400 years ago. And so I want to give you some scriptures to look at at a later date. So God had made this promise to Abraham in Genesis chapter number 13. And then he reaffirmed the promise to Isaac in Genesis chapter number 26. And then to Jacob in Genesis chapter number 28. If you did, it denotes that God is a generational God. So God not only wants me to be blessed, but he wants my seed and my seed seed and my seed seed. All my children and my grandchildren and my great grandchildren. God said, not only am I going to bless you, this blessing is going to bless your whole lineage. Tell your neighbor it's not just about you, but it's about your seed and your seed seed and your seed seed seed. God want to give generational blessings just like they are generational curse there are generational blessings amen and so he comes and he reaffirms his promise to Isaac amen the son of the promise in chapter number 26 and then amen to Isaac's son Jacob in Genesis chapter 28 then somebody say then then he reaffirmed the promise again to Joseph in Genesis chapter number 50. Then he affirmed the promise again to Moses in Exodus chapter number 6. Today, God is affirming some promises to somebody in here today. Glory to God. He knows how to come back to let you know I haven't forgot about you. I know it's been a while. I know you've been dealing with some stuff. I know you've been wondering in your mind, well, God, have you forgotten about me? God, is you still going to do what you say you're going to do? God, I'm a little low in my spirit. I need you to lift me. Today, God wants you to know I haven't forgotten about what I told you. Now, here in the text, the time had come for these great promises from God to come to pass, to come into manifestation. Amen. The promise was on the verge of being fulfilled. I want to stop right here and ask anybody in here, can you sense something about to happen great? Can you sense that God is about to do something in your life? Can you sense that you're on the verge of something? Can you sense in your spirit? I, I can't articulate it. I, I can't explain it, but I know I sense something new 
new in the atmosphere. I, I sense something is about to happen. I see now why all hell has broken out against me because the devil is trying to stop me from embracing what God has me. Can you sense it? Do your mind know something that your spirit already knows? I'm telling you, something big is getting ready to happen. Something marvelous is getting ready to happen. Something phenomenal is getting ready to happen. God is getting ready to do something straight away, immediately, and suddenly. Blessings from the north, the south, the east, and the west are about to overtake you. Amen. Your dream is about to come into manifestation. All it takes is one word, one email, one phone call. Y'all don't want to have no church with me today, but it's a new day, and God is going to do a new way. Somebody say, I feel it. So I feel it in my Holy Ghost spirit. So I feel it down in my sanctified toes. I feel it in my hands. I dream about it. I toss and turn about it because I can sense it. I can feel it. Amen. Glory to God. When I ought to be crying, I'm shouting because I know that God is faithful to do what he said he's going to do in my life. Glory to God. So here they are. It's time for these great promises to come into manifestation. Amen. Come into manifestation. And they're on the verge of this thing being fulfilled. Tell your neighbor, don't step out of line. So you better stay on point before you miss what you've been waiting for. Tell somebody else, or don't you let the devil trick you. Amen. I know it's been a long wait, but he's going to make it worth the wait. Turn to your neighbor and say, boo, it's going to be worth the wait. Come on here. Glory to God. It's going to be worth the wait. It's going to be worth the wait. And so here in the text, the children of Israel have wondered in the wilderness, the wilderness, the wilderness for 40 years. They have wandered in the wilderness. The wilderness represents difficulty. They have been dealing with difficulty for a long time. The wilderness represents hardship. They have been dealing with hardship here, and then they have a break, and then hardship here, there, and everywhere. Come here, they have been dealing with this thing. The wilderness represents a barren place. They have been in a dry place. They have been in a desert place. Amen, glory to God, for 40 years. Amen, glory to God, for 40 years, and now they have finally crossed over the river Jordan. Yeah, they had crossed over. Tell your neighbor I'm crossing over right now. They crossed over. Now, they were tired and they were weary. And somebody listening to me right now, you're tired and you're weary. But the Bible said, be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, you're going to reap. You're going to reap if predicated upon you faint not. Come on here. Be not weary in well-doing. Keep doing well while you're weary. Y'all don't want to have no church with me today. Amen. And so they're weary, but they understood it's my time. Who am I talking to today? You know it's your time. It's the set timing of God in your life. It's the set timing timing of God in your life, the set timing of God or the things that God wants to do in your life. Ask your neighbor, do you really know what time it is? Mm -hmm. Somebody say in the spirit realm, I'm not talking about 11, 11 a.m. Do you know what time it is? And so glory to God, they are literally camping in the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. And the word was out. See, let me tell you something. God know how to magnify what he's doing in your life. Come on here. God knows how to do it. The same people that saw you hang your head down. The same people that saw you cry. The same people that saw you go through. The same people, they men that laugh that you say, yeah, yeah, look at where's your God now. Are the same people that God will not let them die. 
until they see his promise come to pass in your life. Oh, God know how to flex his muscle. I don't have to flex mine. He know how to do it. Come on here, somebody. Who am I talking to? Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. I know how to do it. And so God does this thing. He let them go through this dry season and let them go through all of this stuff and look like it's not going to come to pass. And then all of a sudden, God sends the word out and say, yeah, we heard. God dried up the Jordan come on here and opened up a way and they went over and now they are there and they right on the brink of embracing the things of God last week I told you you have to believe what you hear that faith coming by hearing out of hearing by the word of God do anybody in here believe the word of God on today do anybody believe it anybody ready to receive it and embrace what God says and say, I'm walking by faith, my God, and not by sight. And so here they are. It's a new day. And their enemies have heard what God is doing and what God has done. And here in the text, Joshua chapter 5, verse number 9, the Bible says this. Then the Lord said to Joshua, their new leader, says to Joshua, this day. I have rolled away the reproach, the derision, the ridicule of Egypt from on you. He said, when you were in Egypt, and man, you were ridiculed. When you were in Egypt, there was a reproach placed on you. When you were in Egypt, you suffered. But this day, I'm removing, removing the suffering and all the residue that is on you from that day. Tell your neighbor God is even moving the residue. I'm not even going to look like what I've been through. Tell somebody else. He's removing the residue of Egypt off you. Tell some prophesy. Say he's removing the residue of Egypt off of you. God said this day. And then God speaks to the leader and tell the leader to speak to the people and tell them this day. This day, mark it down. Amen. Mark it down. This is a day of memorial. This is a day to remember. He said, this day I have rolled away the reproach off of you from Egypt. In other words, God is saying, I'm getting ready to show everybody I'm with you. Ooh. Yeah. God said, I'm getting ready to show everybody that I'm with you. I'm going to let all your enemies, the Canaanites, come on here, the Hittites and the Jergesites, amen, and the Amorites and all them Ikes, come on here. He said, I'm getting ready to let everybody know that I am with you. And I know sometimes you have even doubted that I am with you. You've even questioned, Lord, if you're with me, you have that Gideon spirit. If you're really with me, well, then why is all of this stuff happening? He said, because I had to let you go through a little something, something. Come on here, because you won't have a testimony that I bought you out except you were in. Y'all don't want to have no church with me today, but God said, I'm getting ready to let everybody know that I am with you. I'm going to let them know that I chose you for this. Amen, that my hand is on your life, that you are mine. You belong to me. You are the apple of my eye. I anointed you. I appointed you. I did this. I know you don't understand. I know they sure didn't understand. They trying to get in your business when they business is already jacked up. Trying to tell you what you should do and not do. But you just listen to the voice of God and follow him. As he directs your steps. So God said, I'm going to roll away the reproach. I'm getting ready to show everybody that I'm with you. By bringing you into this promised land, I'm bringing you into a place that you can put your own self. I said, I'm bringing you into the place of the promised land, and I'm going to fulfill my good word over your life. How many of you got a word over your life? There's a word hoovering over your life. See, the word that's over your life, it cannot go back. For the Bible said that the word cannot return back unto God void. The word can't go back and say, Lord, I know you sent me in the earth to do this thing for Cynthia, but I can't do it. Uh, no, the word has to fulfill what God sends it out to do. It cannot go back un 
unaccomplished. It cannot go back unfulfilled. It cannot be sent back to the sender. So God said, I'm getting ready to show them the word that's over your life. Joshua said it like this. Joshua 21 and 45. He said, there failed not. Everybody said, there failed not. There failed not any good thing thing which the Lord has spoken unto the house of Israel all came to pass. Now I need you to personalize this text. See I, I teach in my class you got to personalize the text. The text had to come alive and so that means you got to insert your name there. Come on here. You got to insert your family there. Amen. He said there fell not any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of the Thornton. Come on here. What is your house? Put your name there. He said, all came to pass. A-L-L. -L. All means all. Somebody said, all means all. And all means all. Everything God said came to pass. But they had to go through a process. And that's the thing that the enemy uses. When you're in the process, it's when the enemy lies in your mind. There's a process before the promise. They had to go through and be processed. And a lot of times, that's what we mess up at. In the process of the thing. Come on here. Tell your neighbor, keep your focus in the process. Keep, your, keep believing in the process. Come on here. Keep, amen, receiving it in the process. Keep in embracing what he said in the process so God says there fell not amen any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel all came to pass the amplified version reads like this not one somebody said not one said not even one not one of the good promises which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel fell not one so tell your neighbor, God is not missing one thing. He haven't forgotten one thing. Even though you forgot it, you need to go back and pick up your journal. You need to go back and go through your Bible. Amen. And all those little notes you put. God said, not one word that I said is going to fail. Then verse number 11 says, on the day after Passover, on the day after Passover, on that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, which is unleavened bread and roasted grain. Because remember, before they was eating manna. Now, manna is a type of Christ. That's the first application. But what happened is that God gave them a miracle in the desert. At night, God would release the manna. And all they had to do in the morning is get up and go get it. They didn't have to do nothing. They didn't have to do nothing but just pick it up and eat it. So prior to that, they were eating manna. But the Bible says on that day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread, which came from the land, roasted grain, which came from the land. And verse 12 said, and the manna ceased. The manna ceased on the day after they had eaten some of the produce of the land. So the Israelites no longer had manna, but they ate some of the produce of the land of Canaan during that year. In other words, God said, I'm getting ready to give you a taste of what is to come, a preview of a coming attraction. I'm getting ready to change your appetite. Tell your neighbor, God is changing my appetite. I'm getting a whole new appetite. Come on here. I'm getting a whole new appetite. I want some filet mignon. I'm getting a whole new appetite. Come on here. Glory to God. I'm getting a whole new appetite. I know you want tuna fish, but he's going to give you some salmon now. Come on here. <laughs> Who am I talking to? I, I, Glory to God. So he gave them a preview of becoming attraction. He said, I'm changing your appetite. The Bible said the manna ceased. Everybody said the manna ceased. Somebody said the manna ceased. In other words, the manna, one text said the manna was no more. The manna was no more. The manna ceased. The manna ceased. The manna was no more. The manna was no more. The manna cease, which represents the end of an old era. Yeah, the end, the end of an old era. 
the end of what was, the end of what used to be. And see, the problem is some of us trying to hold on to what used to be, hold on to what was. And God said, you can't embrace the new and the old at the same time. I told you last week. And so it's the end of the era. I know you're used to God giving you the manna every day. But in this new season, it's not getting ready to happen that way. This is a new day. God's getting ready to do it a whole new way. Tell your neighbor, embrace the new way. It constitutes what I call a divine ending. Divine ending. Whenever there is a divine ending, God has already established a new beginning. Whenever there's a divine ending, God has already established a new beginning. And so divine endings, for those of you that are taking notes, number one, divine endings always establishes new beginnings. Divine endings always establishes new beginning. Whenever God has caused a divine ending, he has already established a new beginning. God is not going to uh, end something and then say, now let me figure out what I'm going to do. Let me see what I'm going to do. He already knows what is up ahead. Amen. Glory to God. And so what it is what I call a God appointed moment in time. It's a God appointed moment in time. A moment that they have just been like praying for and like, God, please, when you're going to do this, I don't mean to complain. I don't want to be a murmur, but I'm just tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of going through this and I'm tired of Robert Peter to pay Paul. And you know what I want to do and you see the situation and you see this and you see that and I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. And then as soon as this happened and this happened and the car break down, then, the, then, the, then, then this happened and that happened. So they've been dealing with this. This is a divine ending. God said that thing is coming to an end. Praise me in advance for the new day and the new way. Pray. See, a lot of times we want to praise him when we see it. But he said, no, you praise him now. See, you say, show me and I'll praise. God said, praise, then I'll show you. Yeah. 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 So it's a God moment. It's an appointed moment in time. And sometimes when you get to that moment, you'll be like, is this really getting ready to happen? Or is God getting ready to pull the rug out from under me? Is this really getting ready to happen? Because this and this and this is happening. Woo, and when this and this happen, usually this and this and this happen. Tell your neighbor, it's all good. It's all good, boo. It's all good. So he's established the new. The new, the manna has ceased, a new generation. Because if you notice in the text, there was a new generation. A new generation, a new generation, a new day, a new way. And in this season of the new, God said, you know, I used to rain it down to you. But now, in this new season, this new day, this new way, I'm putting a new demand on your faith. Yeah. A new demand on your faith. A new demand on your faith. I know your faith was here on this level, but now I'm not, you're not going to the next level. I'm taking you to the next dimension of faith. Tell your neighbor, I, I, I'm, I'm done with the levels. I, I'm stepping into the dimension now. A dimension that cannot be measured. Come on, who am I talking to? I'm getting ready to increase your capacity to receive the greatness of what I have in store for your life. Who am I preaching to today? He said, enlarge the place of your tent. Come on here because I'm getting ready to increase you. I'm getting ready to put some stuff in your hands that you didn't even pray for. Come on here. I'm just going to give you something because you held up in the wilderness so he says man i'm putting a demand on your faith demand on your faith your faith is important to god faith is the currency of god faith 
Just like you go to the store and you exchange with money for what you want to purchase. God said, I need to see your faith. And so now, I'm not doing like I used to do. I'm not giving you the matter because I'm getting ready to take you, amen, into a new land. And you, it used to come down, but now you're going to plant seed and it's going to come up. Tell your neighbor, I've been planting so many seeds. And now in this new land, I'm getting ready to reap a harvest of all the seeds that I have sown in secret all the stuff I've done God said no it's not coming down no more it's coming up uh, tell your neighbor amen plant your seed because it's going to be a supernatural harvest that's about to break forth in your life uh, on the left side and on the right side uh, put your hands together and give God praise in this place say yes say it I can't preach like this, Desiree. That preacher trying to come out of me. That preacher trying to come out of me. So he said, I'm getting ready to put a new demand on your faith because it's a new day. It's a new day. And see, what I'm getting ready to do in your life, it requires you to have faith on a whole nother dimension. Come on here. Ah, because I'm getting ready to do some stuff in your mind that's going to blow your mind. You know what? The promises that I told you, that dream that I gave you, that I said I was going to do in your life and make you a millionaire, tell your neighbor it's getting ready to happen. God is setting everything up. Come on here. You just weren't ready for it then. But tell your neighbor in this new season and in this new day, God is getting ready to cause some supernatural things to begin to happen in my life because the king heart is in the hand of the Lord and he's turning some hearts my way. Lift your hands and say thank you for turning hearts my way. Let me give you this last point and then I'm going to shut it down. A new demand on your faith. And the next, he said, you're going to experience a new source of provision in the promised land that you didn't have in the land of the wilderness. You're going to experience a new source. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready to get other sources of income. New sources, new, sor new sources of income. I used to just have one, but God is getting ready to give me different sources of income. Can tell your neighbor, new sources of income, new sources of provision is coming my way. He said, you're getting ready to experience a new source of provision in the promised land. Now, don't confuse provision with the promise. Don't confuse provision with the promise. The manna was only provision from God. It wasn't the promise of God. See, the provision of God always points you toward the promise of God. And that's why God said, I got to move away the manna because now I'm pointing you toward, amen, the promise. It's time. It's this way. Tell your name. It's this way. It's that way. God will show you what he got coming for you. Somebody said, get ready. Somebody said, get ready. Mm -hmm. You got to understand this land of Canaan was what we call a metaphor. It illustrates prosperity and the abundance of God. I came to tell somebody this, and I don't know who I'm prophesying to. Amen. But I came to tell you, amen, glory to God. You need to begin to declare and call it to you. I know it may seem foolishness, but the power of death and life is in your tongue. Amen. Call for prosperity. I'm calling for prosperity to my name. I'm calling for prosperity to my home. I'm calling for prosperity to my family. I'm calling for the abundance of God to my life. In every area of my life. He said, I came that you, yes, you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Tell your neighbor in this new season, amen, I went from not enough and just enough. And now in this season, I'm going to more than enough. Clap your hands and give God the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready to 
your neighbor, prepare to receive the sufficiency of God. Yes, yeah, that the abundance of God is coming your way. Say it's a new day, and God is going to do it a whole new way. Clap your hands and close your Bible. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of word. Father, we bless you. It's a new day, and it's a new way. And we refuse to allow an old mentality to keep us stuck in an old season. Have your way in our lives. I feel it. I sense it. I know it. I know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And we thank you for the new. We've been waiting on the new. God, it's a breath of fresh air. Thank you for the new. Oh, my God, we thank you that you are so mindful of us. That's why the psalmist said, what is man? What, what is man that you are so mindful of him? And the son of man that you would visit him. Thank you for giving us a visitation of your word today. Thank you that the manna have ceased. The manna ceased is a sign of a new day and a new way. It is a sign of no more barrenness. No more barrenness. But in this new season, you're getting ready to experience the fruitfulness of God. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. The wilderness is over. Now it's time to experience the fruitfulness of God. Going to be fruitful naturally. Be fruitful spiritually. Be fruitful mentally emotionally in every aspect of our being gonna be whole and fruitful thank you for the new day and the new way and we thank you for that even now in the mighty name of Jesus thank you that the manna has ceased we've been waiting for this moment in time and so we wait in expectation. We wait with anticipation. We wait believing you. We wait praising you. And I seal this word over this house because the oil that is on this house is on this people. And and you have released this word over this house. And so we thank you and we praise you for every testimony that shall come into manifestation and fulfillment in this new season, in this new day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God glory.